It is Anna Nimura from FinTech and Founding Conference 2019, and I am with Sharon Zohar of The Big Push, the founding partner. And this is a company which supports women for women, mm -hmm. and um, you're supporting women entrepreneurs. Yeah. And you have been an entrepreneur yourself, a very right. successful one. Mm -hmm. So what prompted you to create The Big Push? Well, I created, as an entrepreneur, uh, I came across the same challenges and the same biases that exist in the market, that exist for women today and have been for so long. And um, I decided that there has to be a better way in order to build businesses without having to go through some of the hurdles and hoops um, that women go through, namely uh, in respect to the investment arena, most, de most certainly. Mm -hmm. I've walked into many a boardroom where the pr people across the table look nothing like me. Uh, you know, we're older white men, to be honest, and it was really difficult to get those ideas across. Or being in a room um, and being the only woman in any room was very, you know, very challenging. So I decided that there's got to be a better way, and in doing that, that I, the big push was developed in order to create and sort of bridge that funding gap in order to help women-led companies succeed. So how it is to be a fearless woman? Um, I don't know if I'd say fearless as much as I think fear is part of being an entrepreneur. It's that risk taking that we all have. And so it's about managing that risk and managing that fear in a way. Um, because I think fear is a good thing. It's a good thing that allows us to recognize uh, we have to be uncomfortable. If we're uncomfortable, we know that there are things to get done and that we, um, we're learning from that all the time and we're innovating through that. So uh, fearlessness really comes from just managing fear, <laughs> I would say. Yes, so when you actually meeting with the women entrepreneurs, um, what are their biggest fears? I think some of the fears and potentially the challenges for women entrepreneurs is really uh, within that arena being taken seriously. Uh, I think some of the challenges they come back to me is about a leadership style. Should they be more like a man in terms of how they present themselves? And you know, my answer to that is, no, we are very different. We have different sensibilities, we look at things differently, and that's the good thing about it. We're very diverse. Yes. So if we have that diversity, we can create more innovation, and we should lead like women because we are who we are and we present ourselves the way we should. Yes. So the challenge, I think, for women entrepreneurs is to stay as they are. Because in a way, this is the advantage. Absolutely. I think they should, this is the advantage of women is to really stay to their North Star, like everyone and every entrepreneur should know what they want and what they believe in and what, where, their, where their strengths are. Uh, and not to really adapt or mold to what other yes. people think. So do you have like any word of advice to the women who are actually starting the venture? I'd say that, um, again, keep really clear as to what it is that you're trying to achieve and, and try to clear out the noise. Uh, one of the biggest things for me is finding a network of people that you believe that believe in you, believe in your mission, and it will always kind of every morning when you wake up prop you up because it is a really hard road as an entrepreneur, and there are many pitfalls along the way, and so we really have to be strong in our core to know that what we're doing is meaningful, but we also need that support uh, from family, from friends, from colleagues to recognize, and you have to find that through your group yes. uh, that can help you through it. Yes, so women are very inventive. We have to you know, like juggle so many things and multitask. Mm -hmm. And is there a chance for women to break through truly into entrepreneurial ventures much more than it is right now because only 4% of women's ventures are being financed. So how the future looks like for women entrepreneurs? I think the future really does look very bright. Uh, more and more, actually, more women, in fact, are building businesses than ever before. Uh, the the uh, irony behind that, though, is that uh, the investment behind it isn't being backed up. So they are starting them, but they're not being supported as much. And so I think the support will have to happen when we recognize that the innovation that women provide actually creates and has been statistically proven that um, it's better business for everyone. We create better ROI for businesses. We provide, you know, better returns f uh, across the board. So more when we see, you know, businesses really, you know, fixing the bottom line, people will pay attention. And um, I think women just have to recognize, just keep moving forward and, you know, biases will be there, but slowly and surely uh, we have to start eroding them by, by, by just being fearless and getting out there. In your entrepreneurial journey, when you are going through, 
what was like the biggest challenge, the moment when you said, I don't, I don't think I want to do it anymore. And then you kind of pulled yourself together and you've done it. Did you have a moment like this? I'd say daily, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Uh, the reality is it's a very hard, very um, challenging road. Uh, but I think every day you build yourself up every morning and you just go, okay, this is why I'm doing this. But there are hurdles every day, some really highs. I mean, if you see a chart of the emotional, you know, uh, mapping of, of an entrepreneur, it's like so jagged, so mm -hmm. high, so low, so high, so low, and then sometimes flat line. <laughs> but um, so I think it's just a mix of, of every day you wake up and you go, I believe in this. And if I believe in this, I'm going to have to get beyond my fear and take that risk to know that what I'm trying to achieve is bigger than myself and bigger than, you know, wanting to create something much bigger than ourselves. So that means in a way love helps, right? You, you believe you, in what you're producing, in what you're creating, and at the same time, you know, you're passionate about it. Yes. Right. So this is what is actually a driving force for the for any entrepreneur, but yeah. especially for women entrepreneurs, that they have to know that yes, there is a green light, there is a possibility, and just push it through one more day yeah. will actually can make a difference. And it is like a creation. Here you're dealing with women. Yeah. It's nine months program, the one you're offering, That's and correct. then there is this big push. It's almost like a warning. Um, no, the, the baby is born, right? <laughs> your venture, your venture is born, is born, and you just like <coughs> let it go, you know, to go on that big road and and uh, you know have the life on its own. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, we we call it the big push because. Uh, it's really good to have a support system and, and push you through some of the difficult times. You talked about balance for women more specifically because we do in the end of the day, we do many, many women, not all women have families as well and children to support as well as, you know, wanting to go and step out into the entrepreneurial arena. So how do we manage those two things? Uh, we have to recognize that what we're doing is also for our children and we have to have that create that balance. Uh, but we need the support of our community. And so the big push is there also to say, you know what, we'll help you get there faster. We won't let you slide into that funding gap. And you have also, uh, you know, your own network, you know, your, your other, ex other uh, family members who can help you support through the other side. So. That is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Lee, thank you so much thank for you. being with us I and welcome. looking forward for new ventures and adventures for the big push. Thank you very much. Thank you.